Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. I want you to open your Bibles tonight to Romans, the fourth chapter. And we're going to be talking about calling things that are not as though they were. Now, you know, in the 70s and 80s and 90s and uh, right on up into the year 2000, Word of God's been taught throughout this nation as never before. We've learned some things, but, you know, in the process of learning, uh, there's always some, some misunderstanding, and there's been a lot of, of confusion about the faith and confession message. Sometimes people say, well, you know, if you say anything other than what is, uh, it, it, how it is right now, you're just lying. But we see a very different uh, principles in the Bible concerning spiritual law. God's Word is spiritual law. And if you will notice in the Scripture that God always said it before He did it. You know, 750 years before Jesus was born, God said to His prophet, uh, a virgin shall conceive and bear a child. You know, God would always just put it out there and lay it on the line and, and uh, tell the devil what he's going to do before he did it. I mean, the devil couldn't figure it out how he's going to do it. But the power was in saying it. God had to have it said in the earth. That's what prophecy is all about. There's some things that'll never happen unless somebody has the faith to prophesy it by the Spirit of God. I'm talking about inspiration from God to proclaim things and set words in motion in this earth. Now, in the morning session, we talked about uh, words, uh, faith, and things. God's Word produces the faith for the things that God has given us. Now, that's the way spiritual law works. Now, you see, I farmed for 29 years before I went into the ministry. I got a hold of this message back in the late 60s when I was sick in body, head over heels in debt. I was, like someone said, supernaturally in debt. You couldn't hardly get that way naturally, you know, I mean. And uh, I was doing everything I knew to do, but it was not working for me. I knew there was something I was missing. And I got a hold of some, some teaching by Reverend Kenneth Hagin on, uh, you can have what you say in, in faith and confession. Now, I was kind of like that, you've seen that poster of that cat hanging at the last knot at the end of the rope, says, hang in there, baby, that's where I was. I was at the last knot at the end of my rope. Uh, I didn't know where to turn. But uh, I got a hold to the truth of the Word of God. You know, I was raised in a full gospel church, and they taught us Bible stories. But they always left the idea that it was God that did everything, and the people had nothing to do with it. You know, they'd tell how uh, uh, David slew Goliath, but, th but they left the idea that God just did it. No, God didn't just did it. Five times before David slew the giant, he said what he was going to do. I'll cut your head off your shoulders. I'll feed your carcass to the fowls of the air. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? There's power in speaking words based on the authority of the word. See, he had a covenant with God. And when you, when you study the scriptures, you find out that, that words is where the power is. Now, we, we uh, quoted some of these scriptures, read them this morning, but I want to reiterate them because it's important to lay a foundation for what we're going to talk about. In the beginning was the Word, the Word with God, the Word was God, the Word was made flesh, dwelt among us. Now, I've heard people say, you know, and down through the many years, uh, I've been teaching this message for 30 some odd years, and you, you, you learn some things, and you hear people say things, and, and you understand where they're coming from. But, the, but the people would say, well, you know, you're just trying to act like God, saying what God said, you know, quoting the Scripture. Well, now let's think about it a minute. If, if I'm acting like God saying what God said, who are they acting like when they say what the devil said? <laughs> now, they don't look at the other flip side of the coin, you see. And uh, sometimes people uh, 
misunderstand scriptures, and that's when Satan will steal it from them because some, some well-meaning Christian will come along and tell them, well, now you can't say that because that's not really true. You're just lying. But you see, all through the Bible, we see this pattern of calling things that are not as though they were. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is a substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. And through faith, verse 3 says, Through faith we understand the worlds were framed by the Word of God. Everything started with words. I mentioned this morning in Genesis 1, 10 times in Genesis 1, I believe it is, it says, And God said. You, you'll notice most of the time when it says, And God said, a little further down, it says, And God saw. God never saw it until he said it because it takes the speaking of that word to bring forth the manifestation of it. He looked out and saw darkness, and there was, there was water over the face of the deep, and uh, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. But nothing happened until God said. And when God began to speak, creation took place, and we're created in the image of God. And then uh, turn with me there. I want you to see this in the uh, first chapter of Hebrews. Let's read the first three verses. God, who in sundry times, divers manners, spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Now notice, he made the worlds by who? His Son, the Word, Jesus, the personification of the Word of God, who being the brightness of his glory. Now, now pay particular attention to this, the way it's worded. Jesus being the brightness of God's glory and the express image of his person. Now, what's an express image? An expressed image is words spoken. That's the way you express an image. You can have an image on the inside of you, and the way that image was created by, was by words, and the way you express it to others and reveal it to others is by words. You speak it. You know, if I, if I were to say a dog, you don't see D-O-G come out of my mouth. You see pictures. You see your dog or the neighbor's dog. Words create images. You say car, you change the image altogether. It says, who being the brightness of his glory, of God's glory, and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, he upholds all things by the word of his power. That's the reason this universe is continuing. You know, the scientists had, had a theory that the Big Bang explosion started everything, and it, it started it going, and it's been going for all these uh, years, but they, they assumed in their theory that it will eventually slow, the, the expansion of the universe will start slowing down, slowing down, getting slower and slower, and then it will implode back into itself, and it'll all disappear. <laughs> I was watching Nightline several months ago, and Ted Koppel was interviewing one of these scientists, and he said, uh, we've had to rethink our theories. He said, we have discovered a way to measure how fast the universe is expanding. He says, it's not slowing down, it's speeding up. It's getting faster. See, we knew that all the time. You don't have time to do what you want to do in a day's time. And the reason that things seem so fast today, time is going faster than ever before. There's no doubt about it. We're living at the end of the triangle of the end, and time gets faster and faster. But now here he says, he is the express image of his person. Now here's what I want you to see in this verse. The word person here in Hebrews 1, 3 is the exact same word that is translated in Hebrews 11, 1, substance. He is the exact, we could exchange the word here and say, Jesus is the exact expression of God's substance of what God is. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Now, I've heard people say, you're just trying to, these, these faith folks are trying to make the Word God. Oh, no, why in the world would we want to do that? It's already that way. That's what he said right here in the Scripture. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Here it says he upholds all things by the Word of his power. He didn't say by the power of his Word. You see, I have some power in my fingers, but that's not all the power that I have. If he'd said by the power of his Word, that might have been all the power he had. But he said by the Word of his power. He tells you where his power is in his Word. 
His word is where his power is. Now, that power is still available today. But you see, you have to, it has to abide in you. It's what Jesus said, if you abide in me and the words abide, my words abide in you, ask what you will and it shall be done. It changes situations and circumstances. So Bible faith only comes from the Bible, from the Word of God. But just being in the Scripture in this book doesn't do a whole lot for you, except give you knowledge. But if you get it on the inside of you, it's power. It's the power of God's Word. By speaking and quoting and proclaiming what God said. Now, an interesting thing that I want to inject here before we get into it, lest I forget it. Scientists have, have discovered that, you know, for years they thought an atom was the smallest particle uh, that, that existed. And then they split the atom. And that's where they found the power, when they split the atom. And, and now they have discovered that there are sub, it, it can be reduced down, there are subatomic particles that are so small that they just simply exist in a cloud form until they, they couldn't find them for years until somebody started talking about them and searching for them, and then they appeared. And remember what Jesus said? Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. <laughs> science, science is now beginning to prove what Jesus taught 2,000 years ago, that you can have what you say if you believe and doubt not in your heart, because words are filled with the substance. They're giving substance to things hoped for. And sometimes people substitute um, hope for faith, but you see, if you had all the faith in the world and had no hope, you would have nothing for faith to give substance to. And sometimes that's the reason somebody says, well, what happened to brother so-and-so? You know, he, 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 had, he had faith, but, but it didn't work for him. It might have been the problem. He had faith, but he didn't release any of it. The Scripture reveals the way you release faith is with words. Whosoever shall say, believe, Doubt not in his heart. Believe what he's saying will come to pass. He shall have. Didn't have it then, but he shall have it. Whatsoever he saith. Now, the more you say it, the more you believe it. The more you believe it, the more you'll say it. The more you say it, the more you'll believe it. It's like a dynamo. And it's producing, as we said this morning, the same as a airplane wing creates lift as it's thrust through the air. Your confession of the Word of God creates faith your confession of that word. You can know about it, but unless you confess that word, there's something that happens to you when you hear your voice saying what God said that, that doesn't happen any other way. It gets on the inside of you. It becomes a part of you. It renews your mind to the word of God, and it'll change things. Now, there's no greater principle in the Bible to healing and health than the principle of calling things that are not as though they were. Now, what does it mean to call things that are not? That means to call things that are not yet manifest. Now, now, what things are we talking about? We're talking about things that God has given us in His Word of promise. Second Peter chapter 2, uh, chapter 1 says, God hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Most Christians spend most of their time praying, trying to talk God into doing what He's already done, to give us what He's already given us. When it's a matter of getting the faith that comes from the Word of God and to speak and proclaim and call those things into manifestation, you have to call them. When they're not there, you call them. And that's why we call ourselves healed when we're sick. Somebody said, I don't understand it. Now, why do these Christians go around saying, thank God I'm healed when they're sick? That's all the more reason you ought to say it is because you're calling for what you don't have. Why in the world would you want to go around saying, I'm sick, dear Lord, I'm sick as a horse? <laughs> I mean, that's already established. I mean, that, that is a present fact, but it's not the truth. The truth is that by his stripes ye were healed over 2,000 years ago, and God's not doing any more about it. 
That's all he's going to do about it. Read Psalms 107, verse 20. It said, God sent his word and healed them. There's the word again. He sent his word. Well, he sent Jesus and he healed. But Paul said in Romans uh, 10, he said, the word is nigh you, it is even in your mouth and in your heart. In other words, the word will do the same thing that as if, if Jesus were here. But it has to be in your heart. It has to be on the inside of you. It has to be a part of you. It's not enough just to know about it. Not just enough to just know what it said. But it's important to, to healing and health. You know, you, you find that, that people that are chronically ill, most of the time they want to talk about where they hurt and what somebody else has died of, and, and you know, it's hard to get them off of the problem. But you never solve a problem by speaking the problem. You solve the problem by going to the Word of God and getting the answer. And the answer is God sent His Word and healed and delivered, and that Word will still heal and deliver, but you've got to voice it. You've got to get it out of your mouth. Now, now here's an article that was written by a uh, uh, MD, uh, Dr. Carl Sandberg of Ola, Arkansas. Now, this appeared in the paper um, the 2nd and 23rd of, of 2000. And the title of it is uh, Wellness Report, How to Be a Healthy Specimen. To be healthy, it is imperative that you believe you're healthy or soon will be. It is almost impossible to be healthy if you think you're sick or if you think you're going to be sick. Your defense against illness starts in the mind, in your mind. Your mind directs the healing activities of the body through nerve impulses, through circulating chemicals in the bloodstream. Researchers have found that your white cells have little uh, receptors on them so that your brain can tell them what to do. Isn't that interesting? And the scripture says, he shall have whatsoever he saith, if he believe, if he doubt not his heart. But the saying is involved, see. This is one of the reasons to use pain medication very sparsely. Pain, for, for using uh, pain medication very sparsely, uh, pain medication fools the brain into thinking that there's no problem. So the brain fails to direct the healing process properly. If you believe you're going to be well, you're much more likely to do the thing that will result in wellness, both consciously and subconsciously. Now, turn that over and look at the flip side of that. If you believe you're going to be sick, you're going to do things and think things and say things that will cause you to be sick. In other words, you're going to have what you say. You're going to have what you believe and speak and declare. Much of our activity throughout each day is directed by the brain on subconscious level. When we believe in our wellness, the brain works toward wellness, and in, in many ways, we are completely, in many ways that we're completely unaware of. On the other hand, if we believe in our sickness, our brain simply ignores many healing activities. This subconscious neuro neurological programming of the body is the whole basis for voodoo. Now get a hold of this. This is how the witch doctors put spells on people. There is no power with them except the power of suggestion to get people to believe in it, and when they believe in it, it works, negative or positive. Now, see, medical science has proved that through the placebo pill. Any new drug to be approved by the F Department of, of, of Drug Administration has to be compared to a placebo. Now, placebo means to please. And uh, they have discovered that you can give some patients uh, a, a green pill if their favorite color is green, and they'll get better quickly, even if it has flour in it or sugar or whatever. And uh, they say that it will even, people that are taken off of these pills sometimes will have withdrawal symptoms. It's the power of believing. 
That's simply what it is. Medical science has proved that it works. And uh, we could go into great length on that, but I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. But the subconscious neurological programming of the body is the whole basis of voodoo. When people believe they're going to get sick, they get sick and even die. Optimistic thoughts are mandatory for good health. And that's written by a medical doctor. Now, you can see why in the scriptures, uh, all through the Bible, there's so much about words and the power of words. Now, science has also uh, dug into some areas that, that is real interesting. See, these subatomic particles that they found, they call them quirks, Q-U-R-K, I believe it is, quirks. And they found that this, <laughs> this quirk is, uh, was hidden for years until they started talking about it and seeking for it. They couldn't find it, but then it showed up. Seek and you shall find. Now, in an analysis of the quirk, trying to find out all, see, all matter is made up of atomic particles and uh, very small particles. They found that the very essence, there was a, an article on the internet some time ago called The Essence of Matter. And what they've discovered in analyzing the quirk, the best they can come up with, that it is, consists of sound waves. That's what it's made of, sound waves. Now think about it for a minute. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, and God created the worlds by the spoken Word, and all matter consists of sound waves. Quirks. Quirks work. <laughs> I thought that was interesting. And Jesus said, He shall have whatsoever He saith, if He believe and doubt not His heart. Words spoken are sound waves. They're energy going out and affecting things. Yet, it, you must believe and doubt not in your heart. Now, that means that you must be consistent with that belief. Don't cast out the Word in favor of what it seems like. Stay with the Word of God. Confess the Word of God. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Sometimes, you know, people think when you're teaching on believing God that you, you don't believe in doctors. Thank God for what doctors can do. You need a doctor, go to a doctor. The doctor gives you medication, take it in the name of Jesus. They thank God, I believe I received my healing. Believe in whatever you do. I believe that God gave the doctors the wisdom to know how to deal with some things, but, but most of the time medicine only, only, only treats the symptoms. All healing comes from God. But there is a process of assimilating the Word of God into your spirit, into your very being, to where it will give you the faith to speak words that will change things. God's Word furnishes the faith to for the subst uh, to, to require the substance, the manifestation of the substance of the things that God has given us. If you can find it in the promise of the Word of God, then that Word produces the faith for it. Where would you find faith for healing? In the healing scriptures. 1 Peter 2.24 and, and Isaiah 53 and, uh, and, and 54 and and many other multitude of scriptures. That's the only place you can get Bible faith for that. And, and it comes by hearing. It comes more quickly if you hear your voice speaking and quoting what God said. And that's the very essence of it. You see, when you heard your voice for, for the first time on, on a tape recorder, <laughs> you got embarrassed, did you? Because you didn't think you sound like that. But that's the first time you ever heard your voice totally with the outer ear. See, your inner ear picks up your voice and feeds it directly into your spirit. I can plug up my ears and speak, and it becomes louder to me when I plug up my ears because the inner ear picks it up and puts it right in the heart. Now, that's the whole basis of what Jesus, or part of the basis of what Jesus is saying when he says, 
um, uh, whosoever shall say, this is the principle of the law of faith, whosoever shall say, believe, doubt not his heart, believe what he's saying will come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. I appreciate so much you joining us for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. Now I'm holding in my hand uh, two CDs. It's called Calling Things That Are Not. It's entitled Calling Things That Are Not As Though They Were. Uh, now this is a new item for us. Uh, in fact, I think this is the first time we've offered it on television. It's for $15 plus $4 postage and handling. Now in this uh, two CDs you will get some information concerning the principle of calling things that are not as though they were. Now somebody said, well, what, Brother Cap, what do you mean calling things that are not? I mean calling things that are not manifest. Now you only get two verses into Genesis till you find God calling things that are not. He looked out and he saw darkness and he said, light be, and light was. Well, somebody said, I understand that, Brother Cap, because he's God. Well, read a little further. He said, let us make man in our image and our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth. See, God created man to have dominion on this planet. He expected us to have dominion the same way that he had dominion, through words. Now, it, there is no clearer Bible principle in the Word of God than the principle of calling things that are not as though they were. You see Jesus do it in all of his ministry. You see Jesus one day he went to sleep in the back of the boat and he had said to them, we're going to the other side of the lake. Well, a storm came on the lake. He was asleep. They woke him up and told him what the devil said. <laughs> yeah, they told him what the devil said. We're all going to drown here in the middle of the lake. And well, that's a paraphrase. But you see, uh, Jesus got up and he walked up there and he looked out in the face of that storm and he said, peace. But there was no peace. There was a storm on, but he called the thing that was not there. And then there was peace. Then he looked at the waves and said, be still. But they weren't still. But then they were. They became still because he called the thing that was not. This is calling things or not. This is a Bible principle that will change your life. I promise you, you won't be bored with this uh, CD. I mean, t today they don't put uh, cassettes in cars anymore much. So if you have a c CD player in your car, you need this. It's offer number 1215 for $15 plus $4 postage and handling. We have a toll-free order line, 1-877-396-9400, 1-877-396-9400. Until tomorrow, this is Charles Capps reminding you the enemy is defeated, God is exalted, and yes, Jesus is coming soon. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.